Hey, I'm Brent Ayler, and I want to talk to you guys about a drop shot. Uh, I get asked everywhere in the country how I fish a drop shot, how I rig a drop shot, what baits do I use for a drop shot, what weight do I use for a drop shot, rod, reel, everything. It's funny because it's just something that it almost it doesn't really feel like a big deal to me because it's something I do a lot of, and I, I understand that you know outside of California. Uh, aside from some of the northern smallmouth states, a drop shot isn't really that big of a player. So, a uh, couple quick things about it. Uh, as far as equipment, you know, everything I do for a drop shot has a purpose when it comes from reel to line to rod, hook, weight, everything. To start off, this here is a Tatula, it's a Daiwa Tatula Elite Series rod. This is a rod that I designed for a drop shot. It actually says drop shot on it. It has my signature and drop shot on it. So this is a rod that I designed specifically for a drop shot. The thing about this rod is that it's a 7-1 medium action rod. I think people use too light of a rod. They use a medium light action rod. The thing I like about the medium is that it has a fast taper. I mean, it has a very soft tip to it, but it has a lot of backbone. The reason for that, the soft tip, is I'm, a, I'm able to fish that drop shot. With too stiff of a rod, you can't sit there and shake that bait in one spot without moving that weight. When you try to move it and shake that bait with a too stiff of a rod, you'll pull it away from the fish and pull it on the bottom instead of just having that worm shake. So soft tip rod helps for that. The medium action of this of this blank where it starts to taper down where it gets a little bit more of a backbone is for a hook set and fighting the fish so it's a medium action but it's a fast action so soft tip backbone seven one seven one one is a good balance between casting and dropping meaning that when you're casting it all the time you want a little bit longer rod when you're dropping straight to them on the graph you want a shorter rod so seven one is just the perfect in between uh, the reel I use, I use one of two reels, either the Daiwa Exist, which is this one, or I'll throw a Tatula LT. Now I'm starting to use the Tatula LT more because it only weighs six ounces. It's very, very light. And the Tatula LT is a 6.3 gear ratio, so it's a lot faster. So when a fish bites, I can take up more line and get a better hook set. Now. The line that I use is Sunline TX braided line in 12 pound. And then I always run 8 pound FC Sniper leader, fluorocarbon leader. Now, I run about a uh, 7, 8 foot leader. The biggest trick on leader length is if I'm casting, I always want that knot outside of the reel when I cast. The reason for that is if that knot is inside the reel, when you cast, that fluorocarbon is, is, is stiff. When it jumps off that reel, it jumps off in a big wide arc. And it's all trying to funnel through this first guide right here. So what happens if I cast the fluorocarbon, it's jumping off in a big arc, then it hits that smooth braided line and when it hits that smooth braided line, it shoots off the, sp the spool in a tight arc instead of that big wide arc. And what happens is, is it jumps ahead of the first guide, and it wraps around the first guide and stops your cast dead in its tracks. So when I'm casting, I always want my finger on braided line, and I want that knot somewhere between here and the first guide when I'm casting. So that's the right length of a leader. For me, it's about seven-ish feet. Now, eight pound FC Sniper fluorocarbon leader. Uh, the hook I'm using is a G Finesse split shot drop shot hook. This right here is a size one. Size one hook, nose hook, is about the size I want for most baits. Sometimes I'll go with a one aught. This happens to be a Yamamoto shad shaped worm. When I'm fishing for smallmouth, I like a shad shaped worm. If I'm fishing for largemouth, I'll go with either a Yamamoto Thin Senko or a Robo Worm. 
the thin sank I'll usually wig rig wacky rig instead of like this but again size one one odd is standard for me in open water if I'm fishing around brush or any kind of structure then I use a rebarb hook that's a Gamagatsu straight shank O'Shaughnessy hook that Roboworm actually puts a keeper on there so I'll use that hook a range tungsten sinker this is a quarter ounce that's the number one weight I use sometimes I'll go up to a 3 8 if it's real windy or a lot of current leader length I would say anywhere from 12 to about 16 inches is what I'll do from weight to hook when I get to the longer 16 inch or you know 20 inch or so is if I feel like the fish are way off the bottom and mostly in a, in a small mouth situation but for the most part I usually run about 12 14 inches about that far right there from my fingers to the bait so about 14 inches that's about standard for me so that is probably the basics for a drop shot I never switch up to a six pound leader uh, rarely will I do even a seven pound leader to me any spinning application is 12 pound TX braided line eight pound FC sniper sunline uh, fluorocarbon and again my drop shot rod by Daiwa Tattoo Elite Series uh, the thing I like about this rod is yes I designed it for a drop shot rod but I can do a lot of techniques with it I used to carry four or five different models in my truck and the boat now I carry one I can do everything with this one uh, because of the action on it. it has a lot of backbone has the soft tip on it AGS guides another thing decreases the weight increases sensitivity because of the weight uh, but it's a carbon fiber guide this carbon fiber guide uh, really transfers vibration directly to the blank a lot better than titanium and it's a lot lighter so all around great setup um, you know it's a pretty basic way to fish no tricks about it you don't have to do anything different to it cast it out let it hit the bottom shake it one bites it you reel them in so I'm Brent Ayler, and that is how I use a drop shot.